Backcourt rules, National Federation of High School rules can sometimes befuddle us. But today we're going to look at backcourt plays, get plays right, so we can take to the court. Tell you what, stick around. <music> Greetings, welcome back to the Basketball Rules Expert. We're going to look at play scenarios so we can be better as basketball officials. Let's go with our first play scenario. A1's missed try rebounds directly into Team A's backcourt where A2 gains control. The officials rule this a legal play. Were the officials correct? Yes or no? A simple play to start. A1's missed try rebounds directly to the backcourt. Uh, and the team A goes into the backcourt and recovers it, right? If we've had team control in the front court, which would be necess for, necessary for a backcourt violation, team control ends in one of three fashions, and one of them is the release of a try. So on the release of the try, there's no longer team control, ball rebounding, bouncing into the backcourt. Team A may legally go into the backcourt, and collect the ball. So, in, so this, in this simple scenario where the officials ruled this to be a legal play, were our officials correct? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, they were. On the uh, In the absence of team control, we cannot have a backcourt violation. Legal play by rule. Hey, thanks for joining us today for Basketball Rules Expert. My name is Greg Austin with A Better Official. I've been a high school basketball official here in the San Francisco Bay Area for over a decade. Consider myself knowledgeable about the rules of basketball. And of course, this show is all about helping you on a journey to becoming a basketball rules expert as well. All right, let's move on. Next play scenario. A1 is dribbling in the backcourt. As A1 nears the division line, they first bounce the ball in the front court, then step into the front court with the right foot. Then A1 backs out and continues to dribble in the back court. The officials rule this to be a back court violation on Team A. Were the officials correct? Yes or no? A1 is dribbling in the back court, moving from back court to front court. They dribble the ball in the front court, one of their feet in the front court, and then rather than continue to move into the front court, then back into the back court. And the officials rule this to be a back court violation. We know there's going to be an explosion of energy in the gymnasium when this play occurs as people uh, involved in the game, the stakeholders in the game are not, unlike us, they are not basketball rules experts. They just know something unusual happened near the division line, so it's got to be, the opponents say, this, it's got to be a backcourt violation, right? But in this instance, by rule, a player dribbling from the backcourt to the front court must establish those three points, right? The three points that many officials often refer to erroneously when we're thinking about establishing front court status as a player with a basketball, right? It applies specifically to a dribbler. A dribbler who has backcourt status moving to the front court is not considered to be. The ball is not considered to have front court status until all three points of the dribbler are in the front court. Okay? So even though the ball bounced in the front court, in this scenario, the ball does not gain front court status until the player dribbling the ball gains front court status, and that would be with all three points in the front court. So in this instance, where the officials ruled this to be a backcourt violation, were our officials correct? Yes or no? No, not on this one. Incorrect by rule on this play. A1 is making a throw in along the sideline in Team A's back court. A1 makes the throw in towards A2, who is standing in Team A's front court. 
B1 deflects the throw-in pass after it was re is released. A2 jumps from Team A's front court, catches the ball in the air, and lands in the back court. The officials rule this to be a legal play. Were the officials correct? Yes or no? Probably the most common test question we see, any test you ever take with basketball rules is going to include this question. Right, because it brings into, in, we have to have an understanding of the three restarts in the game of basketball. One of them is the throw-in. Rules and restrictions <clears throat> related to the throw-in end when the throw-in ends. So in this play, we have a situation where there is an exception in the rule that allows a player to jump from the front court during a throw-in, catch the ball in the air, and land in the back court. They can have one foot in the front court, one foot in the back court. It doesn't matter which way, which uh, rhythm their feet land, first front court, then back. It doesn't matter. There's an exception in the rule during a throw-in. But in this instance, the throw-in had, had ended on the defense tuck touched by the defensive player. So the exception no longer applies and the legality of the play no longer applies as this is a violation by rule. So in this instance where the officials ruled this to be a legal play, were our officials correct? Yes or no? No. No, they were not. Hey, before we move further, I've got a group of tremendous show supporters who help fuel our broadcast. Let's take a look at the show supporter big board today. Jay Severson, Chris Hirano, Mike Wong, Paul Clay, and Mike Goodwin from Alaska. Much appreciated and much love. You want to support the show There'll always be a link in the show notes below, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to put one up above. Awesome. Let's move forward now with our very next play scenario. During a throw-in by A1 from the end line by Team A's basket, the throw-in is touched by A2 before it goes across the division line where it is recovered by A3. The officials rule a backcourt violation on Team A. Were the officials correct? Yes or no? Super common question for new officials. This play occurs in their game and it, again energy rises in the in the building thinking something that's got to be something ref, right? where a player uh, throw in from anywhere on the court is touched by a player in the front court. We know there's team control during a throw in. The ball's there the last to touch in the front court and then the first to touch in the back court. That's got to be something, right? Except no, no, it doesn't, right? In order to have a back court violation, we must have team control on the court and then front court status. Last, last to touch in the front court and first to touch in the backcourt. The team control that's given during a throw-in is only for the administration of fouls, not for the administration of three seconds, backcourt, 10 second count on the court, etc. So in this instance, where the officials ruled this to be a backcourt violation, were our officials correct? No, no they weren't, right? Got this play wrong. It's something that can catch us by surprise if we're not paying attention, but legal play by rule. A1 catches the throw-in pass with one foot in the on the floor in Team A's front court and the other foot not touching the floor. The non-pivot foot then comes down in the back court. The officials rule a backcourt violation on Team A. Were the officials correct? Yes or no? Well, one of our challenges here is we know that there's an exception during a throw-in that allows a player receiving a throw-in pass to catch the ball in the air and make a landing such as is intimated by this where one foot lands in the front court, then the other foot lands in the backcourt. But important to understand that that rules exception 
9-9-3 only applies to a player who catches the ball in the air. If a player is on the floor and catches the ball with front court status and then steps into the backcourt, that is a backcourt violation by rule. So in this situation where the officials ruled a backcourt violation, were the officials correct? Yes. Yes, they were. The exception does not apply in this instance. The player had front court status when they caught the ball and then stepped into the backcourt, thus creating a backcourt violation by rule. We are taking a look at our very next play. A1 is dribbling in his or her backcourt and throws a pass to the front court. While standing in Team A's front court, A2 touches the ball and deflects it back to Team A's backcourt where it touches the floor. A2 recovers in the backcourt. The officials rule this to be a legal play. Were the officials correct? Yes or no? Okay, so A1 dribbling in his or her backcourt. We have team control on the court, backcourt status, throws a pass to the front court. <clears throat> Teammate, A2, touches the ball. Let's say it caroms off their knee and deflects it into the backcourt. It bounces on the floor, gains backcourt status, and A2 recovers in the backcourt. Is this a legal play? The officials ruled it to be a legal play. What are the things that we have to consider on a play, right? Team control is on the court, in the backcourt. The ball has backcourt status. How does the ball gain frontcourt status? Touching the front court, or touching a player or an official who has frontcourt status would establish frontcourt status. The fact that the ball bounces then in the backcourt is not a factor on this play because we have team control on the court. We have last to touch in the front court, and we have first to touch in the backcourt. So in this instance where the officials ruled this to be a legal play, were the officials correct, yes or no? No. No, they were not. This is a backcourt violation by rule. I'm going to press this button and see what happens. A1 inbounds the ball at the division line. A2 jumps from the front court, controls the ball in the air, and while still in the air, passes it to A3, who is in the backcourt. The officials rule a backcourt violation on Team A. Were the officials correct? Yes or no? Again, a throw-in scenario where we throw the ball, A2 jumps from the front court, and our brains say, ah, here comes the exception. Right? They jump in the front court, they catch the ball in the air, and then they pass the ball. Well, that's not in the exception. They pass the ball to a teammate who has backcourt status. Okay, So in this instance, had that player... In this instance, had that player simply landed in the backcourt and then pass the ball, we would have a legal play. But since the player caught the ball, ending the throw-in, the exception no longer applies. We have team control on the court. Pass the ball to a teammate. We have a player who has front court status. Contacting the ball, the ball has front court status. Ball's passed to a teammate who has back court status. We have team control on the court with the catch. We have Last to touch front court, first to touch back court. We have a back court violation by rule. So in this instance where the officials ruled a back court violation, were the officials correct? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, they were. Our officials were correct. This is a back court violation by rule, not a play you're going to see every day.
While making a throw in from the backcourt, A1 passes the ball directly to A3 in the front court. A3 muffs the ball and the ball bounces directly into the backcourt where A4 retrieves. The officials rule a backcourt violation on team A. Were the officials correct? Yes or no? Simple play, happens a lot, misconceptions may apply, we can get a play like this wrong. In order to have a backcourt violation, three things must be present. Team control on the court. How is team control on the court established during a throw-in? A player holding or dribbling the basketball has established player control on the court. Player control on the court establishes team control on the court. And then after we have team control on the court, we must be last to touch in the front court, first to touch in the back court to have a backcourt violation. In this instance, as in many erroneous rulings on backcourt, we do not have all three of those necessary components. We only have two. We have team control that during a throw-in, there is team control, but only for the administration of fouls. The ball is muffed in the front court. The ball gained front court status, and they were the first to touch in the back court. But what's missing is we never had player control on the court establishing team control on the court. So in this instance where the officials ruled this to be a backcourt violation, not an uncommon scenario. Were the officials correct? No. No, they were not. This is a not a backcourt violation by rule. Legal play, right? Understanding we have to have player control, establishing team control on the court in this situation in order to have a backcourt violation. A1 passes to A2, who catches the ball with both feet completely in the backcourt. Pivoting on her left foot, A2 then steps completely into the front court with her right foot. She then reverses the process by bringing her right foot completely back into the backcourt. The officials rule a backcourt violation on Team A. Were the officials correct? Yes or no? All right, now we have to understand status. The status of the ball, the status of the player, what has occurred on this play? We have a player who has the ball, has caught the ball. They are in the backcourt. They have backcourt status. The ball has backcourt status. Hmm. That player then steps one of their feet into the front court. What is the status of the player at that point? We have to know that. We have to know that. We have to know status to adjudicate plays properly in basketball. The status of the player has not changed. A player who is co in contact with the backcourt, the backcourt of course includes the division line, has backcourt status. The fact that they have stepped one of their feet into the front court does not change the fact that they are in contact with the backcourt. So in this instance, where our player with backcourt status steps into the front court, they still have backcourt status, and never gain front court status and then backcourt status, a necessary sequence. Were the officials in this instance correct? Yes or no? No. No, they were not. This is a legal play by rule, a simple question of status, and one that we have to get right as basketball officials. Thanks for joining us today for the Basketball Rules Expert. If you would, take a moment, hit like, subscribe, and notify so you don't miss out. Hitting like really helps us with the YouTube algorithm, gets the video in front of more basketball officials. Tremendous. Hey, before we go, allow me to thank some tremendous show supporters that help fuel our broadcast. Jay Severson, Chris Hirano, Mike Wong, Paul Clay, and Mike Goodwin. 
Much appreciated and much love. You want to support the show? There'll be a link down in the show notes and I'm going to do it. I'll put one right here by the Christmas tree. We have additional video content available for you here. Here's our masterclass on the rules for backcourt in National Federation of High School Basketball Rules. Here's another great video. Make your choice. Choose wisely. We'll see you in the very next video.